Welcome. Welcome. Housewives of True Crime. What's up? What's up? <laughs> we're recording for the first time on video, you guys, and we're going to put it up on YouTube. That's what's up. So far, it's going real stupid. It's not going as planned because we, um, <laughs> you know, we're the housewives and we have lots yeah, of kids. So we can't so 100% depends. get our shit together. I got this background situation that I thought was going to be so cool. Look at this background and I situation. Can't, I cannot cover up my closet. I've thrown a bunch of clothes on the floor. All I'm thinking about is what a headache this is going to be for me to reorganize. I can't get the damn light to work. So I'm not lit. And I'm not lit. Or maybe you're lit. And that's why no, you can't get all this shit. It's too early. <laughs> oh, but it I is should Friday. be. I'm going to start. I have a cocktail. I came prepared. Oh, good job. Good at you. Happy Lunar New Year. Today it is on Today Friday. It is the, to the year of the ox. Boom. Boom. I'm down with any culture cel celebratory holidays that bring on good mojo so i'm celebrating it good good on you i am going to celebrate too i chose this background because it's a palm tree and the beach and it's snowing in my front yard so i thought i'd rather be there on the beach you guys i don't know if tab's gonna make it out there i don't know god <laughs> better get warm quick so <laughs> seriously, Dallas is freezing balls right now. And when this episode airs, it's going to be Monday and it's actually like zero degrees outside in Dallas. Not going to do it for very much longer. Okay. So listen, if you guys want to watch us for any reason, we are going to be on YouTube and it's HWTC is our channel. I mean, okay. we're going to figure yeah. it out. Check it out. Check it out. And especially if you want to see my closet. She tried to cover it up a little bit. I tried to cover it up. <laughs> it didn't work. But, and then I you tried know, to. I'm going to perfect this in the future. I tried to tell her how to do a virtual okay. background. It's going to be. A Look thing. at you guys can kind of see my closet too. If I move around a little. Bit. <laughs> I tried to teach yeah. her a virtual background and she can't figure it out. You got, I need an update or something. It's stupid. She also sent me some stupid light. I couldn't get it to work. I know. I did. So I did put cute. on makeup. I know. A little bit. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay. So anything fun happened this week in your world besides your camping adventure? That was last week. Oh. You went camping? No. No, no nothing that else. Was, that was last weekend. This weekend, oh. nothing on the books. No, but did you get I hope you have chicken nothing feet? on the books. Did you get chicken feet? You were going to feed your kid chicken feet. Funny you should ask. Funny you should ask. I might not even get to do it, and it's all your fault. Why? Okay, so, uh, so Kyla. So Gretchen is teaching her kids all about Asia in homeschool, and so she was doing all this Asian food. And since the Dallas Housewives did that also and fed their kids chicken feet, Gretchen was going to do it too. Correct. So what happened? Anywho. So, you know, I researched the dim sum places and I am all planned on going and picking it up. I have to drive my ass to Irvine, which is about 30 minutes. Anyhow, they're only having takeout until 1145. Oh, today. today. Yes. <laughs> it's my fault. Now I could have made that if Tab would have been showed on up time. on time to our originally scheduled thing but she did not i had to put some someone owes me on. some chicken feet i'll send and you some I chicken those feet sticky pork buns oh my god oh my they're god. so good i got up and walked extra so i could eat them Bitch. oh so sorry mm -hmm. you know asian food is high in um carbs I don't care what it's high and it's delicious. <laughs> it's delicious. I really, I really do like it, but it's high in sodium too. I'm all yeah, about it. Salty I'm just saying, carbs. That's what I like. -y. It's probably not on your diet. That's just what I'm saying. So oh you can God. actually thank me. So you're welcome. <laughs> don't get dim sum today. <laughs> okay. Well, 
Hope it doesn't warm up anytime soon for you. How about that? Well, it's not no, it's until not. I take my ass somewhere else. Oh yeah. You're going to go somewhere else. That's what you do. All right. No. How yeah. about you? Anything new? No, no, no. Okay, I should we just get... I, yeah, but I, I did slide on ice. That was my first experience in your uh, car. In my car, yeah. Well, thank and God did you, you see the pile up? My God, the pile up in Fort Worth. Everybody's been texting me. They're like, "Are you close to this?" I mean, yeah, I'm not close to news. it, but it is so devastating. I can't even imagine. Bing. Oh, that's what I worry about you. Cause you have ants in your pants and you're always like, I gotta go. I gotta go. I gotta go right now. And, um, yeah, I do. Yeah. And I I'm have like, ants oh, in my no. pants. I have to move all the time. I, I am aware of this from, you know, the Okies, like when there's bad weather, you're not going, you don't go anywhere. Hunker down. I know. And okay, I don't know so- that you're, I don't know that you're capable of doing that. Yeah, I am not capable of doing that, but you know who is <laughs> capable of doing that? So I, um, I'm using a laundry service now because I'm, I've got too much laundry and I just needed somebody to help me. Okay. Mm-hmm. So she comes and picks it up and then brings it back and she came and picked it up and I need it. And for this weekend, and she wrote me and she's like, I'm not going to come because of the bad weather. Fair. And, which is fair. But now she has hijacked my clothes. And so I was like, I'll come get him. Where do you live? <laughs> so, yeah, you're right. I have ants in my pants. But oh, I was like, oh, my God. See, it. you are trouble already. Know. You know who would love to have to hunker down? You. Me. Yeah. I would love it. I would be, I would love it if I could just force my husband to like sit on the couch and watch TV with me all weekend. I'd no. love it if you do that for an hour. I hate that. Watch movies. No, I hate it. Make food. No. Oh, that mm-hmm. would make me so happy. I would do so good. Not me. In the Texas freeze. We'll come out here. Okay. What, oh. what are we talking about today? Oh my God. Happy Valentine's day. Oh, people. Yeah. You have, it's been Valentine's day. Love, love, love. We love, love. <laughs> right. I mean, yes, we love, love, but I'm pretty sure like, I mean, I didn't really, this is a story yeah. about love gone okay. stupid. Okay. Well, I can't wait to hear sad. it. Sad. Sad. Okay. Let's, oh, sad. let's do it. Today, I'm going to tell you about two couples whose paths crossed in Meridian, Idaho in 2010 and 11 and left them all forever changed. Meridian, Idaho looks like a great place to live. Very affordable. You can buy a beautiful home there for 300K and its population is around 75,000. So it's a decent sized city. Yeah. And you know, lots of everybody's moving to Idaho. It's like Texas and Idaho. Everybody's moving to Idaho. Idaho is coming in second to Texas on people skedaddling out of Cali. Yeah. And if you like the cold, go to Idaho. Idaho's having a moment. Yeah, for sure. Okay. Mm -hmm. So this town is, you know, all like green and happy. Like everybody that wants to move to Idaho. Idaho. Idaho, Idaho, Idaho. Idaho. I can't not say it. Yeah. (laughs) Like everybody's looking for. Okay. So it's pretty idyllic for a young couple like Ashley and Emmett Corrigan. Ashley and Emmett met in college at Utah State while Ashley was working at the gym. Ashley is the whole package. She is real smart and just likable. She's outgoing and hot and she has naturally curly hair. I'm super jelly of that. She's total disco biscuit. Okay. Mm -hmm. Like good curly hair. Not frizzy curly hair. Oh, I know my sister-in-law has like really good curly hair. Best hair. hair. Yeah. Okay. So of course, when she asked Emmett out, he agreed. You ever asked a guy out? No. 
Have you? No, me neither. But she did. No, she's got the confidence. She does. I'm telling you, she's it. Okay. So these two hit it off right away and were engaged within months. That's like not always the best thing. Just saying that, that, yeah, that you might be onto something there. I mean, it works out for your parents, but it doesn't always work out. Yeah, it doesn't always, it certainly doesn't always work out. Okay. So they are, these crazy kids are both Mormon. So they were married at the temple. They wanted to have sex. That's why they got married so quick. That's right. And, and they, they got it going on and they had twin girls just a year later. So they were young. This sounds like a lot of pressure to me, but somehow they made it all work. They both Mm -hmm. graduated college and Emmett graduated law school. And by the time he was 30 and Ashley was 28, they had four kids that Ashley stayed at home with and one more on the way while Emmett worked as a bankruptcy lawyer. Wow. They're like real ambitious people. Okay. They are. I think it's because they don't drink. <laughs> not why. I think you could get a lot more accomplished. A lot done. Okay. Oh, yeah. tell me about it. Oh my gosh. Our friends um, came over last night and we drank until like 1 a.m. And then I was like, really could not get out of bed. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. That was like three hours that I could have been being an attorney or something. Oh my God. Your drinking costs me dim sum. I know. Sorry. I'll I'll make it up to you. Okay. I'll send you some chicken feet. (laughs) Okay. No shade to chicken feet. No, I actually am super into trying it. Okay. Anywho, Emmett, Emmett was ambitious and with his growing family, I mean, clearly he was ambitious, right? He wanted to make some more money. And so he decided to pursue criminal law on the side. Apparently, that's where the money is. Well, see, okay. I knew it. Yeah. I A co-worker of his recommended a paralegal friend of hers. Go ahead. No, I was just going to say, I should have done it. I could still you do it. should have done it. Maybe when right? I'm like retired of after my oh, kids go to college. Ne- it's never too late. Oh, I know. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. At least get on a jury or something. Yeah. Maybe lower first expectations. Step. First, step. first okay. step. Okay. So first you have to say you're available and not make up an excuse. I know. Right. Okay. <laughs> no, I think I made up too many excuses so they don't ask me anymore. <laughs> right. Yeah. Okay. So coworker recommends a paralegal friend of hers that needed a job after recently being let go from another law firm. And she thought that... This friend of hers could help him get into the criminal law field. Her friend was a woman named Candy. Ooh. Candy Hall. Yeah, Candy with a K. Oh. Which is is cuter. It right? is cuter. Yeah. Okay. So Candy was in her 40s. She was married to a man named Robert. They had been married almost 20 years and had moved to Meridian, California. And had moved to Meridian from California with their two teenage daughters. Um, I just want to say, I wish everyone could stop posting about how they met their significant others. Are you seeing how that they what? The on Facebook? How they met their significant others. Oh, I've been seeing that lately. I'm oh like, my God. It's nobody like, nobody so... wants, I don't, nobody wants to know. know. Yeah. Or okay. maybe they do. Over it. Maybe they do. Okay. So Robert worked as a tech guy for the local sheriff's department and friends described them as being happily married until pretty recently. They had hit a rough patch, like real rough. In fact, their daughters, in fact, despite their daughters describing their father as being the nicest guy in the world, in addition to loving their mother to death, he had been making preparations to move out. Oh. Yeah. Coincidentally, Ashley and Emmett's marriage was not in the best place either. Emmett was becoming more and more distant, and it wasn't just Ashley that noticed it. 
his family took note as well that he used to be all about his family. And now it seemed like he was kind of all about Emmett. He was spending a lot of time at the gym, which mm-hmm. seemed mm-hmm. that's always that's a surefire sign, mm-hmm. right? Okay. But it seemed like extra, extra since Ashley's like stuck at home with the kids after she just gave birth to her baby boy. They noticed he just didn't seem as excited or as present as he had after she had the last baby as he had been with the well, rest. I mean, this is baby number five. Right. I know. Maybe it I does. Mean, come on. <laughs> I know. I know. I know. I know. When I remember when I had my third baby, I had like C-section and they were like, oh, we'll bring him right over to you. I was like, take your time. <laughs> I, they asked with, and I had my third baby. They were like, do you want us to take him to the nursery? Maybe you could sleep a couple hours. I was like, heck yeah. Yeah. <laughs> my yeah. other ones we'll are like, to- nobody is taking nobody. that baby out of the yeah, room. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like we got time. Okay. So anyways, so basically, uh, despite Emmett acting kind of selfishly, Ashley was completely devoted to reconnecting with him. She is a devout Mormon, and she describes that part of her faith is projecting perfection, kind of like she has this fake it till you make it attitude. Mm -hmm. She wanted the happy family, so she did everything she could within her power to make that the reality. Time after time, she brought her Mama A game, which... I will give you an example of, but I just want to give her props because when I had three babies, I found it too exhausting to take a shower most days and we ate a lot of orange chicken, you know, that you just the, like oh, throw on the stove. The Trader Joe's one that's already yes. cooked. Okay. Yeah. I love that I, one. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So good. Okay. So Speaking of Asian not rock star Ashley, right? Mm-hmm. We still eat orange chicken a lot. Who am I fooling? Okay. (laughs) So not rock star Ashley. For example, one night she was expecting Emmett home around six and he didn't come through the door around eight. And then she went to kiss him and he turned away. Oh, he did come in the door at eight instead of six. Yes. Okay. She had dinner waiting and the kids all around the table, like she's waiting for two like, hours. We're all going to have, yeah, we're all going to have this family dinner. I mean, oh I don't know God. if she made them sit at the table, yeah, but, yeah, you know, but I know like, you, you know, like she's like, yeah. we're going to, we're going to do this. Okay. And then he turns away from her kiss. And then he turns away from her kiss. And then he told her he already ate. Oh, <gasps> dick. Totally. So then. After that, he told her he was going to Walgreens. And she like she's like, you just got here. She asked him to please, please stay. And he said, don't tell me what to do. And he took oh. off. Now, there's a couple reasons that explain some of Emmett's bad behavior. And one is that he had started using steroids. Steroids are the worst. Dude, they make people crazy. Not nice. Yeah, right. I mean, I will take a dad bod over a dude that doesn't eat my good food any day. I mean, if I'm cooking it, you're eating it and you're kissing me. That's it. (laughs) Right? Okay. Just take note of steroids. Right? I mean, yeah, it's not a good idea. Anyways. Even if you, it's not a good idea. even if your wife doesn't cook. Okay. It's not a good idea. Okay, It's just not, just don't do it. A lot of people do bad things that we talk about on here that are on steroids. It's true. Okay. Okay. The other reason was, as you probably suspect, I don't know, maybe you do or don't, oh, but and it was having, having an, affair? A, an affair with his new paralegal candy. Oh shit. Yeah. <sighs> Shit balls. Okay. Ashley had suspected something was going on with Emmett for a while, but being the way she was, she talked herself out of any suspicions that he Tell was me. actually being unfaithful. Was candy was a disco biscuit too? <sighs> I don't not? like to give anybody the title. Okay. When I think of disco biscuit, 
I think, like, I think that Amy Schumer is more of a disco biscuit than Angelina Jolie. Because Amy Schumer, I think, is real cute and she's totally fucking funny. Like, she's the whole package. Yes, to me. I, I agree. And Angelina Jolie is just beautiful and skinny. That's it. <laughs> um, okay. I, so, okay. So, I, I would, agree. Candy is attractive. Yes, okay. she is attractive, but she Listen, is not a disco biscuit. But she's hot. Or, she's not cute. She's, she's not, not hotter than Ashley. She's not hotter than Ashley, but she is attractive. Okay. 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 I mean, it doesn't even matter. Sometimes they go after It really like... clearly, it does not matter. Yeah. Okay. Halle Berry. Right. We've A-Rod's seen it. in some trouble right now, <laughs> okay. but it's, we see it. Okay. We've seen it. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So anyways, she's suspicious. But she didn't think he was being unfaithful. She thought he might be drinking behind her back or something. She didn't like, she didn't really know what, what was going on. She just thought he was not right. She just focused on trying to make Emmett happy so that their marriage would be strong again. I mean, she's like a much better person than me. So she says, honestly, even though Candy had rubbed her the wrong way from the first time she met her, she thought to herself, she must be crazy for thinking that something would be going on with her and Emmett because Candy is 40 and Ashley is 28 and hot. She also thought that Candy presented herself kind of trashy for a professional woman. She says that the first time she met her, she had her cleavage out and hooker boots on and a mini skirt. And she never thought that someone like that would be Emmett's type. Well, I will tell you right now that I am team Ashley Porvita. Okay. But like, really, Ashley, do you have to go after her outfit? I mean, it just made me pause because Ashley presents herself as such a genuine lady that I would like, we would hang out with. And I just thought some of her comments about candy were maybe not necessary. I mean, I think high boots are real cute. Yeah, I do too. But she's just like pulling at anything, right? She's just like, whatever it is, she would just be like, I get, I do get it. I do get it. Hurt people, hurt people. And Ashley was hurt. Yeah. You know, because her presumption went, her presumptions about candy being unappealing were wrong because Emmett and candy had started sleeping with each other according to coworkers, just two weeks after Candy was hired. Mm. Apparently, it was no secret that these two liked having sex in the office. Around Candy's people? husband, Rob. They would just sh- go in, close in the, door. the door. Everybody heard everything. Yeah. No, it's kind of hot. <laughs> just saying. It's not. Yeah, it's kind of hot. It Unless is. it's your husband. Yeah, if it's my husband, yeah. it's definitely not hot. But I mean, not maybe, hot. If, no. maybe if you're candy, it is. Oh my god! I mean, I'm okay. not that. I'm so, not. Yeah, I'm just clearly saying. it was. Let me tell you. Yeah, clearly it was. When you're because watching they did it all like the time. movies and that happens, that's like the hot part, right? I mean. In I real life, it's, it's so not unrealistic. It's like, like I'd probably get a, I'd probably get a staple at my butt or something. I mean, it's like, <laughs> and when they do, or they throw everything off the yeah. desk. It's like that's so messy. Yeah, I know. You're I like, don't, who's cleaning like, that shit I can out? Take that. Yeah, yeah. It's like lame. Okay. Okay. So, Candy's husband Robert had figured out what was going on. That's why he's packing up to leave. Okay, yeah. he had been. He had printed some emails he found between the two of them mm-hmm. as proof. So he was, you know, not happy about it. Why do people put stuff in email? They just should not. Oh my God. Don't put anything in writing. People are so stupid. Okay. Okay. So he knows what's going on, but he wasn't like, well, that's a wrap on our marriage. Let's consciously uncouple Candy. <laughs> <laughs> he had kind of the polar opposite attitude. He had real strong feelings about like, who the fuck is this 30 year old homewrecker with five kids that my wife has betrayed me with because I, I don't like him. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 
Well, everything came to a head. That night, Emmett didn't eat his dinner and left and went to Walgreens. At the same time as Emmett was heading out to Walgreens, Candy's husband, Robert, was calling his daughter to ask where she was and if she had her mother's car because it wasn't at the house. Mm. She told her father she was with her boyfriend and, you know, no sweat, I'll come right home. On the way, the daughter passed by the Walgreens and saw her mother's car in the parking lot. And so she let her father know that mom Mom's must at Walgreens. Be, mom must be at Walgreens. Mm -hmm. Well, what had happened was Candy had met Emmett at Walgreens, left her car, jumped in his truck, and then the two drove to some subdivision nearby and had sex in his truck for the second time that day. Oh, my God. Oh, so much sex. Okay, so... <laughs> I just exhausted just telling the story. Oh my God, I totally am. <laughs> so, so Robert called Candy up after the daughter said her car was at Walgreens and asked her, you know, where she where was. And according, according to Candy, Emmett took the phone from her and said, she's with me and we're just talking. Right. Robert <laughs> responded something like, why don't you go home and talk to your wife? wife your own wife not mine yeah. motherfucker yeah. and Emmett told him to like eat a dick or something basically and then proceeded to take candy back to her car at Walgreens okay well Robert had already been to the Walgreens and walked every aisle and by the time candy got back they all three the two men and candy had a confrontation in the parking lot Unfortunately, they were out of view of the store's surveillance camera, camera, like just a hair. What Candy says happens is that Emmett and Robert got into a confrontation and she says Emmett was more the aggressor. She said at one point she got in between the men and said, this is enough. I've got to go. And she turned to walk to her car. And while her back was turned, she heard pop, pop, pause, hey. pop. It took her a second to realize that the pops were gunshots. But once right. she turned around, she saw both men on the ground. She could hear her husband was trying to get up and reach for something. And when she saw it was a gun, she grabbed it and tossed it across the parking lot and called 911. Robert had been shot in the head, but the bullet had only grazed his skull. Sadly, though, Emmett was fatally shot twice in the head and chest. Oh, God. I know. Police questioned Robert at the hospital about what happened, who fired first. Robert said something like, I shot, but then he didn't finish his sentence after that. That's it. And when he was able to talk again, he said he didn't remember what happened that night. He did suffer a brain injury from where the bullet fractured his skull. So it is a possibility that he like legit doesn't remember. But I mean, it's also pretty convenient, right? Yeah, he remembers. Yeah. So police also interviewed Candy that night and she was visibly upset and tells them her account of turning around and not seeing what really happened. They asked her if she was involved romantically with Emmett, and she denied it up and down. <gasps> I mean, they asked on. her over and over again. They're yeah. like, check, we're, we're going to find out. Yeah. This part is so weird because there was only one gun there, and it belonged to Robert. And the gun was the gift from Candy to her husband, by the way. Okay, so we don't know who shot first. I think it's possible that there was a struggle and the gun went off shooting Robert and then he shot Emmett twice. But I also think it's possible that Robert shot Emmett and then turned it on himself, but wasn't successful. And that's why he was reaching for the gun again. But why would Emmett turn the gun on himself? 
Emmett didn't turn the gun on himself. Oh, you mean Robert? Robert. Turned, yes, I think Robert could have shot Emmett twice and then turned the gun on himself. And where was he shot again? Sorry. Robert's bullet grazed his head, causing a skull fracture, and Emmett was shot in the chest and the head. Don't you think the wife picked up the gun and tried to shoot Robert after he shot Emmett? That is a good question, but I don't think so. I think they would have figured that out. Okay. Okay. Anyways, uh, you can't really go by Candy's account of the sound of the bullets because her story changed when they went to trial. And Robert was charged with Emmett's murder. I mean, I tend to lean toward how she told the police the night that they interviewed her right when it would have been fresh in her memory. She said that night that the shots were fired. Like I said, pop, pop, pause, pop. I think later she had time to think about what would support her husband's defense at trial. And believe it or not, at the trial, Candy and Robert were back in love. Together. Oh, my Mm -hmm. God. Well, Emmett was gone. So she kind of changed. I think she just kind of changed her story. Yeah. And what was, and so her story now is, Emma De, or Robert doesn't remember. Her story is that maybe he doesn't. She doesn't remember. know exactly, know. exactly what happened, but she thinks she is insinuating that Emmett took, had control of the gun and shot first and then Robert got it back. It's pretty far-fetched. Yeah. Okay. Well, because before I get into more details, why would Robert just be at, he's waiting for them. He's like, he's like, you, you fucking my wife. I'm going to kill you. Yeah. That's what I think. And is Robert and Candy, are they Mormon too? No, no. See, they don't have any conscious, conscious, conscious. Like us. We don't have any conscience. I'm just saying. <laughs> well, there's yeah. Okay. Although Emmett's Emmett's having an affair, so he doesn't have much conscience either. Yeah, whatever. Yeah. Okay, so before I get into more details of the trial, I'm going to rewind to Ashley learning the devastating news that her children were fatherless and he died in the arms of Candy. Oh my god. Right? Let's take a minute to think about how extra devastating this was for her to get the knock on the door from the policeman and simultaneously learn that not only was her husband dead but he was having an affair she didn't know that already and you figured them out at the same moment she did not know she's a dummy she now okay she knew when they told her who he was with you know, she put it all together at she that moment. She didn't want to know. With five kids and yeah, a newborn, probably she, she didn't want to know. I think, she, I think you're probably right about that. I think she didn't want to know. But regardless, she hadn't come to terms with it. So she's lear- okay. she's coming to terms with it at the same time she learns yeah. he's dead. Okay. That sucks. Yeah. She was humiliated, angry, you know, sad. It's just awful. She said that when she learned that Emmett had died in Candy's arms, fighting with her husband over her, she felt like beyond betrayed. Like Candy has no right to have been the one that was with him when he took his last breath. How was it possible that Emmett was fighting for Candy when, you know, Ashley's like at home fighting for him? Yeah. Making the dinners, you know? And she's got a new baby and four other kids. That is just, that's a lot to process. She said that Candy had actually sent her gifts for the baby, including baby blankets. And I'm guessing they were real cute because Ashley was pretty sour over the fact that she had taken all her baby's newborn pictures with the blankets. Oh, no. I would hate that. God, that is really, I would hate that too. Yeah. Mm So Robert was charged with first degree murder. And by the time of the trial, it's all come out about the affair. 
Robert had the emails printed in his truck and they had phone records between the two yeah. and the accounts of coworkers, you know, so now Candy had to come clean about police when they questioned her about that night. Candy testified for two days about the nature of her relationship with Emmett and what she recalled the night of the shooting. She contradicted herself a lot. Like, you know, now she said that the sequence of gunshots was pop, pause, pop, pop, which supported her husband's defense conveniently. Oh, yeah. It w- It felt like Candy also just took the opportunity to throw low blows. Like she said that when she learned from a coworker that Emmett was married, but he's married, but his wife treated him terrible. Is what she said. Oh, come on. Which I really doubt that anyone ever said that. No, no one said that. Yeah. Five kids at home. Nobody even knows because she's like no. stuck taking care of yeah, her kids. Totally. I mean, I think Candy, aside from being the other woman, is just kind of spiteful. So, well, now she's trying to save her husband from going to prison. Yeah, but you don't need to throw shade at Ashley. Lame, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we don't like candy. No. Not on Disco Biscuit. That's what I was trying to tell you. Okay, sorry. Okay. So in interviews, she is just condescending. That's what we're saying, basically, you know, and just not very likable to me. And I don't think that the judge actually really liked her. He said that in his 31 years on the bench, that... He didn't think he had ever seen a witness more thoroughly discredited than Miss Hall. So the defense's argument was that Emmett shot Robert once and then Robert shot him twice. That was kind of tough to argue against the gunshot residue evidence, which showed that Robert had a whole bunch on him and Emmett had one single particle. Particle. Yeah. So Emmett didn't shoot at Robert. And it was on his left hand. I'm assuming Emma, didn't, it, Emma didn't shoot him. There might have been a struggle or struggle. something. Yeah, there might. And maybe yeah, it that's went probably off. it went off when they were yeah. struggling, and it grazed Robert. And then he was probably like, "You're done." Boom, boom. Yeah, that's probably what happened. Yeah. So the defense brought up steroids found in Emmett's car which made him easily agitated. And they painted a picture of Emmett in court of this, you know, confrontational 30 year old hotshot lawyer that was full of himself. They tried to get some of Emmett's recent Facebook posts admitted as evidence in the trial, but they were denied. But I found them in a reading of Emmett's appeal because they're trying to show that he's this aggressor. Okay. Okay. So put this in the context that it is alleged that Robert and Emmett had had a confrontation previous to the fatal night at Walgreens. And so that is what Emmett is talking about in these posts, but he never names names. So we don't really know. Okay. But Candy, I mean, you also have to consider Candy is the source that is telling us that they had had a confrontation previously. You know, we, we, you know, it's Candy. Okay. Okay, and you also have to consider that it came out that Candy had been telling Emmett that Robert abused her, which Candy denies, but in my opinion, I can kind of see her doing that. Yeah, she did that. like manipulative and like the type that gets off on dudes fighting over her. Yeah. So just factor that in when you hear Emmett's Facebook post from two weeks prior to the night at Walgreens. Okay, Emmett posted, nothing better than having someone try and call you out when it comes go time. They end up pissing their pants and not wanting any part of what they started. Someone responds, I had that happen to me too tonight. When I came back and said, let's do this, he backed down like a baby bitch And then Emmett responds, yeah, bro, mine happened last week. Apparently they talk, 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 smack in Cali. Here in Idaho, talk is cheap. 
throw down settles it once and for all. Yikes. Okay. I am just like reading this. Like you're a lawyer. You're a grown up. Yeah. This sounds so high school. Yeah. Like trashy. Yeah. Yeah. It's not, it's not a good look for sure. So like I said, this was not admitted evidence, but to me, it kind of makes that night make more sense. I think that Robert and Emmett probably did have some confrontation previously, and maybe Robert was intimidated by Emmett. Yeah. And that is what led him to thinking he needed to bring his gun with him. He wanted to, I think he wanted to turn the tables, like I'll bring my gun and then I'll intimidate him. Didn't really work because Emmett was probably out of his mind on steroids and getting an earful from Candy about how she was being abused. I mean, it just like set him off. I don't think Emmett shot first, but I don't think that when Robert pulled out a gun, that it was likely that Emmett stopped antagonizing him. You know? Yeah. I think someone pulled out a gun on us would be like, whoa, hands up. Oh, Let's yeah. Let's talk. I, yeah. I think Emmett was like, you know, fuck you, you know, kept talking. Well, right. Remember that those people in Philadelphia, when the guys started like shooting, they kept like yelling too. And I'm like, dude, he's got a gun. Like, run your ass inside your house and lock the door and call 911. Like, if I see somebody with a gun, I am. I am scared. Scared. Yeah, I'm scared. I also want to make it clear. I'm not blaming Emmett. I mean, at all. He did not deserve to die for cheating on his wife or for using steroids. Yeah. I mean, I think ultimately Robert deserved to pay because he shouldn't have had the gun with him in the first place. But it was not a good choice. No. And it seems like... That's pretty much what the jury thought because they found him guilty of second degree murder because they didn't think it was premeditated, but they did find that he was responsible. I think it was premeditated. I think it was, I think it was almost premeditated. I think he went there to, I think he went there to scare him, scare him, but I don't think he went there to kill him. Okay. 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 So anyways, he got 30 years and he'll be eligible for parole in 2028. Not that long. And did he have kids? Yeah. He had two teenage daughters. Okay. Okay. I just looked up a picture of the family. Oh Um, yeah. They were like the five, you know, Emmett and his wife and the five kids. They're a really cute family. Oh, really? What a stupid guy. Okay, so after the trial, Ashley started writing a really powerful blog about coming to terms with her story and her mm-hmm. life now, and eventually a book that kind of corresponded with her blog called The Moments We Stand. I read through some of her book and her blogs, and I found them like endearing and vulnerable, honest. It's clear that she has taken her situation and turned it into something honest and powerful by forcing herself to take a hard look at herself and why she spent so much time striving for impossible perfection and her feelings of worthlessness. She is really well-spoken and heartfelt and she does speaking engagements and she has some videos on YouTube. If you want to check her out, she's just really relatable and nice. She's real cute. Yeah. And you would like her. Yeah. Yeah. I, could tell. I think it's nice that she came out. I mean, if anything is good, that she came out on the other side, changed for the better under mm-hmm. unimaginable circumstances. Okay. So in 2016, Ashley and Candy faced off on the Dr. Bill show. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So Candy out the gate said, What she did not appreciate was Ashley portraying her in her book like some kind of cheap slut. And she said, you know what I think? If Emmett, (laughs) she said, you know what I think? If Emmett were here, he would tell Ashley she is wrong. I mean, like, what kind of crap is that? Oh, my God. When she first sat down with Ashley, she said, what do you want me to tell you? I'm sorry. What a bitch. 
okay sorry Ugh. oh my god yeah she's the worst she did not do anything to redeem herself in my eyes i mean that would have been that would have been her chance what did dr phil say did he say like doesn't really seem like you mean it candy Dr. Phil said, I mean, I can't quote him verbatim, but he said things like, I think what she wants to hear is like, he tried to help her out by saying like, you're not, you know, getting it. Ashley like really like took her to town. Ashley's like, I don't need you to be sorry. She's like, I came here to show you that you did not break me. Ruin me. Yeah. 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 So Ashley has remarried and had another child and she continues to blog. And I think she should because she continues to evolve more and more and be inspiring. And what's inspiring about her now is that she's not perfect. And she's real, real about that. Um, I also want to mention that she talks a lot about how great Emmett was for most of their marriage. And I found, you know, looking through like his friends and family stuff that they, they miss him terribly and he made some bad choices, but we all have. And he just, he did not deserve to die. No. He sounded like he was a good guy that was just in a bad place mentally for a brief time. And that's not how he should be remembered. I like that. But, you know, we always say like, don't cheat. Don't cheat. Don't cheat. Yeah. Don't like. cheat. Yeah. It really costs you sometimes your life. Yeah. Yeah. Sadly. So Robert is 51 now and still serving his sentence in Idaho State Correctional Correctional Prison. Mm -hmm. I know that at least one of his daughters believes he's innocent and she does not have a healthy relationship with her mother in an interview she said, all I'll say about her is she's a real difficult person. Shocking. Shocking, right? <laughs> I was like, she is a difficult person. And Candy herself found some trouble with the law right after the trial wrapped, actually. The law firm that she worked at before working for Emmett's charged her with grand theft. She was found guilty of embezzling $30,000 from 50 different clients and served 18 months for that little misstep. Whoa. Wow. Yeah. For some reason that doesn't surprise me. Yeah. Yeah. But so that was, she was released in 2012 or she was, her sentence started in 2012. And then she was on the Dr. Phil show in 2016. I don't know what she's doing now, but I don't imagine it's in the legal field. <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> right. And yeah. Yeah. Wow. So that's, that was uh, uh, definitely a love story a gone love, wrong. Love gone. Love gone wrong. Bananas. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So I have some questions. Okay. So first question they wanted me to talk about um, a long time ago on one of our episodes, I had mentioned that some people at the school my kids used to go to made up a rumor that I was a porn star. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Remember that? Yeah, that's my favorite rumor. <laughs> that's, like, that's your favorite rumor. <laughs> yeah. You know what? It should be my favorite rumor. That's also. whatever. You should totally it's like. Own it. I, I should totally own it. I'd be like, yeah. Have, be you like, seen the, have you seen the videos? Oh, yeah. Listen, you, th- you should be like, you think my husband's company is paying this private school tuition? Oh, no, 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 no. Mommy's getting residuals. That was <laughs> <Right>? good. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I don't. She wanted to know if like we talked about like who did it, um, who said it. I have a very good feeling. It was some fucking Karen out there. That's right. Mm -hmm. Um, And then they wanted to know how we became lifelong besties. You want to answer that one? Um, From what I recall, 
we worked at, I mean, we worked at Outback Steakhouse. I am two years older than Tabitha. So naturally, I think I thought I was real like hot shit. Oh, at that time? Because I was yeah. 19 and Gretchen was 21. Mm-hmm. But I had a fake ID. Yeah. And so, I mean, it was like, why would I bother hanging out with the likes of you? But we just gravitated to each other. We constantly got in trouble for talking too much. Mm-hmm. And yep. I don't know. And it was just love from there. And then we would go, we like to have fun. So we would go yeah. out. <laughs> oh, yeah. And then, and then what, especially once we were all able to get into the bars, then, I mean, it was on. Yeah. And then I had a boyfriend at the time and you had a boyfriend, but then it was like on and off and, and yeah. then you would hang out with my boyfriend and all those friends. And then Gretchen, you know, hung out <laughs> with some of them. I was very friendly. <laughs> yeah. um, here's and another, I, what? I was just going to say, and not judged. Okay. I, I'm not judging. I never judge. Yeah. That, yep. Of course you get it. And that's why we're still friends. Yeah. Um, if you could have an answer to any unsolved crime, what would it be? I know this one. Probably the Delphi murders. Oh, that one is a good one also. Because he's still out there. I know. You know, I was thinking John Bonet. Or I know these are just like, or um, Madeline McCain. I really that one or you know those ones I just want solved yeah she's still out there like at least John Bonet you know she's not but Madame McCain like she could be you know a sex slave I guess you know I wouldn't mind knowing where Susan Powell's body is either oh people keep asking us to do that case you guys there we do not do children cases also I don't know if you've realized like we don't do super dark cases either. It, I mean, they're all dark. Don't get me wrong. But sometimes after researching so much, you just, it's its too hard. Yeah. Let me also tell you, we have a couple shout outs to people that have posted or tagged us on social media. Fun. They're friends about us. That is amazing, you guys. Thank you so much for doing that. We really appreciate it. That's how we're going to give our shout outs. And I want to shout out first. Um, her name is Kate, but on Instagram, she goes by Miss Spencer Kate. What's up, Miss Spencer Kate? And she was doing some cross stitch. Um, she sounds royal. I know she does, right? Yeah. Um, Kellish. Oh, wait, no. Oh, wait. Kelsey? Kelsey? Kelsa? Kelsa. K E L S E A. Fayetteville. Fayetteville. Well, you say it. K E L S E H. If it's Kelsa or Kelsey. Okay. Either way, I like the name. Mm-hmm. Thank you so much for doing that. Wendy. Also, thank you so much. She always is such a nice um, supporter of us. Radiantly, Radiantly Rosie. Love that name, by the way. Mm -hmm. She also posted about us. Um, Super cute. Tasha Mullins. Thank you so much. Um, Mandy J. Thank you. A lot of people. Thank you. Yep. Amanda Shoemaker. Oh, yeah. I made, I made a note of it. Oh, okay. Amanda, you tagged me, but not Housewives of True Crime. Oh, Stacy oh, Reed. I still appreciate it, though. Thank you. <laughs> oh, no, she did tag Housewives of True Crime. Oh, she did? Uh-huh. Oh, my bad. My and bad. on Instagram, um, Amanda Shoemaker, Wendy, Stacy Reed, Mandy J, Tasha. I mean, you guys, thank you so much. So if you want a little shout out, please tag us. Um, and help us grow our podcast. We really, really, really appreciate it. You know, um, I just had one of those really good ideas that what? I get sometimes. Yeah, tell me. Since we're doing the shout outs now, which I totally think is awesome, mm-hmm. but I, it doesn't give me the opportunity to tell anyone to eat a dick. <laughs> <Yeah>. Maybe, <laughs> maybe we should like 
have an eat a dick person every week. Like I'll find some like criminal Asshole. or something. <laughs> yeah. Yes. It'll be okay. like my quest all week. All right. Sure. Okay, I'm on it okay. next week. Listen, there's a lot of nomination. There's a lot there's of them so out many. there. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, thanks for listening, guys. And clink, clink. Clink, clink.